Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wa salatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul 'uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening everyone. Welcome to today's sharing session organized by Office of Student Development and Community Engagement OSDCE, Office of Academic and Industrial Linkage OAIL. KLMSS and Counseling and Career Service Unit, CCSU, KLM Pago. Before we begin, to get the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our program, let's all recite the Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha. So, hi everyone. I am Diana Kamarina binti Datu Garcia, your moderator for today. Alhamdulillah, we have been given the opportunity today to gather here virtually, online of course, um, for to discuss on a topic which I believe is very crucial to discuss and dissect. All right. So, because of the pandemic, you know, it's been a year. Everything seems to slow down. And of course, academic sector too is affected. It's been more than a year since the first case of COVID-19 was detected. And we cannot deny that we have been through a lot, you know, especially students and lecturers putting our effort to do the best, to provide the best and to give our best for ourselves and also for the people around us, of course. So, inshallah, there will always be a light at the end of the tunnel and things will get better soon, inshallah, in the future. Students from all around the world had to go online for the past few semesters. But slowly, now, you can see, like, physical classes are allowed. People are starting to go to school, to universities. And for IIUM, we are still uh, in online and hybrid mode where we have uh, physical classes in some uh, kulia or some faculties and some are still fully online and this is this applies to kulia of languages and management and so we are still in rtl mode remote teaching and learning uh, mode okay so with me here today we're gonna discuss and dissect about um, RTL, remote teaching and learning, and acknowledging the effort by the students and also the lecturers. So I have uh, Sister Nadia today, Sister Aina Nadia. She is the counsellor at Counselling and Career Service Unit, CCSU KLM Pago. And just a little bit background about her, about our speaker here today. She is a graduate from UUM, University of Utara, Malaysia, and her major is counselling. She was awarded with the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic and International Award in 2018. She has a vast working experience and before joining IIUM, she was a counselor trainee at Pejabat Agama Daerah Kubang Pasu, Jitrakeda. So without further ado, let's invite Sister Nadia to the stage. Assalamualaikum, Sister Nadia. Waalaikumsalam, Nina. Can you hear me clearly? Very clear. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. I'm good. I'm so excited to see you and everyone virtually, even though I can't see them like directly. Indeed, indeed. So, have you had your dinner? Alhamdulillah, I had my dinner today early. Oh yeah. So it's... that I would not be starving. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. We need full tummy to give the best for yeah, our audience. Yeah. Yes. So thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for sparing some time of yours today for our program. And we are really, really excited to listen and also to learn about what is RTL and the view from psychological perspective. So let's move on to the first question, shall we? Yeah, we shall. Like, okay. 
So um, the first question, let's 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 learn or let's know more about what are the differences between RTL and physical classes. You know, are there any major differences or like what is the what is your view on the differences between RTL and physical class? Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, well, first and foremost, I would like to um, uh, thank um, our organizer. We have OSGCE and OAIL, OAI, short form, and collaboration with CCSU as well as uh, KMSS to organize this, I would say, very important program for uh, not just students, but also for um, lecturers to acknowledge the fact that uh, we have like what you said earlier, we have gone through a year. Um, it's already March, so in a way, we're going to celebrate so-called anniversary of COVID-19 in Malaysia. And um, we know that we're going to go through another phase of uh, RTL, okay, especially in um, UIA. So basically, RTL is remote teaching and learning in um, IIUM, but in other universities, some of them call it as ODL, right? ODL. and virtual learning so um for this first question i would say um I, I would like to to give a brief um idea on what is actually going on um that students are lecturers and also basically um to the community of university that going through for the past one year so um of course there are changes there are vast changes on this and we know that rtl or odl comes because of covid okay so we need to acknowledge that covid is a crisis that is not just happened in malaysia but as well as in other countries so when this happened things are um when we say it's crisis it's unplanned and we are not prepared to go through this okay um so when it happened, it makes students to deal with um, some changes, okay? Uh, changes in routine, changes in daily activity. So we, we need to stay at home. We need to um, be in our campus to protect ourselves from getting this virus, okay? So back to the questions, what are the differences between having virtual class um, as well as physical class? So the first thing that we need to know is that there is... Uh, a lack of in-person classroom relationship. This is a very obvious difference, okay, that you guys um, experience. So back in the days when uh, we can see our friends, we can go to class uh, face to face, um, you know that we are free. We are free to go wherever you, we are. We, we are free to, to hang out with our friends. So we have group discussion. Um, we, we can literally spend our time with our peers, okay? our friends among us but then when we opt for rtl everything is 100 percent online we literally cannot spend time with our friends okay um and this actually an issue that we need to adjust okay we we need to understand that when this happened we are forced to adjust and some of people adjusting it well but some of them may take longer time to adjust okay and when we have this lack of in-person classroom relationship which means it lead to lack in connection okay so um when we have online classes itself uh, it can actually lead to some stressful events okay we we become uh we rely on the digital devices internet connection almost fully Okay, so when we have unstable connection, when we can connect, and um, this increase our worries and anxiety. Anxiety in general form is not, I'm not referring to anxiety disorder, but um, anxiousness in general. Okay, and besides that, we also experience uh, feelings of isolation. Okay, because we can't we can really plan um, on when are we going to hang out with our friends like we used to do before COVID happens because of the uncertainty. We don't know when will this be end, what will happen and everything. Everyone is literally trying to figure out on what to do to protect ourselves as, as an individual and as well as um, other people. Okay, so these are the pitfalls of digital learning. 
So that's the third point, the first one. So the second one is um, the differences between physical class and virtual class is the increase of screen time usage. Okay. So before this, when when you have class face to face, uh, you don't really uh, need to be with your phone um, twenty four seven. By means with your phone twenty four seven means like you you use your phone with you using it. Okay, because you have class, you are interact with your friends, with your lecturers. Um, so you basically deal with people in reality. Okay, there's a presence of human with you. Okay, but when you have online classes, um, like I said, you are fully uh, relying on the online virtual world. Okay, so of course, the more time you use with screen, Okay, with your laptop, um, PC, uh, and phones and whatnot, it can actually increase fatigue. So daily life activities, you already, uh, you can feel the tiredness of activities, but this time around, you it can increase your fatigue, headaches because of the screen, and then lack of motivation because of the changes that you need to go through and you don't know what to do on dealing with this thing. Okay, and then some of people or students may experience some avoidance, like, oh, I don't, I don't, I can't really deal with it. So I'm just going to ignore it. Okay, put it aside. And then um, some procrastination. And again, um, the feelings of isolation. And it minimizes the awareness and understanding to others because you, you are thinking about yourself. Okay, your safety first. And then um, your family, if you're aware with your family, would think about your family, their, their safety, their well-being as well. Okay. And these are actually the, the, the obvious differences between physical class and virtual class. So it actually um, creates the distress, okay, and emotional uh, disturbance on that. So other than that, uh, there is also um, uh, obvious is the communication between you and your educators okay um before this when you want to deal with your lecturers you can just simply go to your lecturers and ask your lecturers uh when is your free time that i can get consultation with you so your lecturer will um check out their schedule to have the free time to allocate a specific time to focus on your matter at that specific date however when online class happen, uh, you both parties need to be patient with one another. Okay, you need to have time to really prepare to write an email or a message to your lecturer first to book an appointment, and then your lecturer is going to check his or her um, schedule to allocate a specific time, which then will add another element which you're going to think about a platform on where you're going to discuss and that you need to consider the the connection and the, the uh, availability so all these things are the challenges okay that students and as well as educators experience um during rtl okay so that's basically the whole mindset of this uh, rtl and uh, physical classes okay um, okay all right. Okay. So that yeah. that would be a, that is my answer for the first uh, question. Indeed, there's like a lot of differences, and um, the moment uh, Sister Nadia said, like of you know in class relationship, when I was in Pago, I mean a year ago, uh, I remembered going out like uh, during lunch, going out to Pancho, having that delicious ayam penyet, and talk about how how stressful the class is and how you know how hot pago is but thinking thinking that again it it affects you know it affects uh, how we see um the our life like the environment is totally different what i can say is from yeah we can the environment actually right Kak Nadia? it's yeah. it's really it's it's affecting like, both student and also lecturer and mm -hmm. of course um what i said just now we are putting the best effort both student and lecturer to have like this effective learning and you know teaching process so i i really feel like wow i the the moment i realized that 
oh, it's been a year I've been at home not seeing my friends. So, yeah, it's emotional sometimes. I get emotional sometimes thinking of it. Yeah, if, <laughs> if, I, if I may add, it's, it's actually the acknowledgement that you guys are going through this for the past one year. It's actually an achievement, I would say. You guys have gone through a lot and it's not easy and look at how far you have to go through and like another round of RTL, I'm not going to say that it's going to be easy, no, but um, acknowledging the fact that the effort, the struggles, all of this high and low, you guys managed to go through that. Okay, so and you will go through it again, beautifully inshallah. Right. So, of course, with problems, okay, we, 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 we look for you know solutions. We look for ways to solve our problems. And uh, I would say, let's just proceed to the second question, lah. And um, one of the ways, or some of the ways, uh, of solving a problem, is to communicate with friends, um, with parents, and then sleeping. And also crying so we call these as you know coping mechanism but of course during rtl um there are changes in the coping mechanism right so what is your opinion on this matter on how students cope with everything you know how they solve their problems so that would be the second question okay so um for the second questions uh we're going to i think discuss for, uh, in depth on coping mechanism right so you mentioned about um, on students uh, coping mechanism during this RTL is by communicating with their friends, families, uh, sleeping, uh, as well as crying. So these are some of the coping mechanism. There are actually a lot, okay? But it depends on individuals. So different peoples have different types of coping mechanism. So we can compare that, okay? But um, my opinion would be yes. Um, if all of this coping mechanism still works for you during this RDL, um, Alhamdulillah, you can you can maintain with that, or you can explore more on other coping mechanism that may helps you as well. But to some people, all of these common or usual coping mechanism that they they have been used um, is no longer work when RDL happens. Okay, like for example, um, like before this, uh, by crying, it can heal them or it can it can make them feel better. But now when RTL happens, um, suddenly they have some um, uh, mood disturbance or like um, suddenly the intensity or the frequency of crying is increased. So there's a changes in coping mechanism. Okay, and the only person that can detect this is yourself. Only you can see the changes that you experience before RTL and while this RTL. Okay, so what I can say here is actually this coping mechanism it's um is a way for you to handle a situation. And this will lead to me saying that all these are adjustment issues. Okay, it's not just, it's not basic, it's not like um, the root cause of these um, problems is 100% because of RTL. But it's actually the adjustment that you're going to do to adjust with this RTL that may create you to feel that way. Okay, so there are difference in that, in identifying the root cause of it. Okay, so to some people, um, they think that, oh, um, RTL is just uh, another way of teaching or another way of learning. I, I don't really affected by that. But then there are some changes in their appetite, let's say, for example. Or perhaps there are some um, change patterns of sleeping okay, because of the work that you need to um, do or submit the, the assignment and whatnot. So, um, at this time around, we need to understand that it's not just the students that is adjust to this situation, but as well as these educators. Okay, so like you said, um, everyone is trying their best to do the best at fulfilling each rules. 
So lecturers are trying their best to provide the most convenient uh, platform um, to teach students to make the syllabus or the study plan works during this RTL and then um, students are trying their best to cope with it and deal with it and of course I think some of the students here uh, obviously can can comment on this uh, you can see how lecturers are trying their best to do this. Some of the lecturers are using vice, um, like different types of apps to make online classes more engaging and more creative so that students are, uh, so we don't feel boring or we don't feel lack of motivation. Because like I said earlier, there are changes in this routine and we are not seeing each other face to face. Okay, and this limits us from um i would say if we see it as a problem then it is a problem but if we see it something that okay yes we acknowledge that it is a problem but how can we deal with it is what matters most okay we know that we're adjusting but how can we do and what can we do to deal with these adjustment issues we have to see in uh, that way okay so um yeah, in this situation, I would say um, coping mechanism is very important. So that's the first thing. And then communication. Again, communication. Since we are apart from each other, we are not seeing one another. So we cannot um, assume that we are okay because we can't see each other. So what we need to do is if students especially have problems, um in submitting your assignments in communicating with your uh, group mates and whatnot communicate with your lecturers kindly please communicate with your lecturers do not expect your lecturers to find you one by one and to ask you if you're okay or not okay because um we don't know we don't know so you need to to be frank and just um come to your lecturer and you know, personally um, approach them and tell them that, Sir, uh, Madam, um, I have this time of problem. I'm not giving excuses, but uh, what can I do to um, still be committed? Uh, I'm trying my best. Uh, can you help me? So that both parties understand each other. So that's why communication is very, very important, especially this time around. Okay, so that uh, we don't have any... Um, I would say uh, miscommunication or misunderstanding because some students they they choose to be silent and wait until at the end of the semester and suddenly say that okay I'm, uh, I want to drop this subject because I, I don't think I can handle RTL but when we check with them with the student uh, there is no communication with between this student with the lecturer so how can how can we help the student if the student cannot come to the lecturers and mention that she she or she is having some difficulties? Okay, so once you know that you are having some um, personal issues and whatnot, um, tell your lecturer. It's so so important to say this because I often not not that often, but there are some students that they choose this way because uh, perhaps you know um, they feel like um, they are. Uh, incompetent so these are another another set of issues okay it's between of themselves they feel like they are incompetent they feel like if they say that they can they cannot handle this rtl they are not a good student but the fact is that everyone is adjusting it's just that you don't know how people adjust to this situation okay so don't think that um, if you see your friends are doing well they are really well Perhaps they just didn't show it to you or to the world or to your Instagram or to your Twitter. Okay, they just keep it to themselves, but they only share it to their close friends. Okay, so um, if you think that you are having um, some problems or difficulties, seek help. Okay, don't, don't, don't struggle alone. Okay, All right, uh, that will be my second answer to Nina. when we talk about coping mechanism, right? Everyone has their own way of coping. Sister Nadia, do you have any any ways, like one way of your way to cope with 
uh, you know, stress. Any, any, you know, any examples? Like for my, me, my, my, coping my coping mechanism is just to eat. <laughs> or eat? Like, like what, what, what type of foods you want to eat during this? I, uh, I, I, okay, uh, my coping mechanism is like I would cook. You know, I would ah. uh, and then give people to eat so like I can distract myself. That is like one of my coping mechanisms. So mm -hmm. my family is like growing and growing, you know, tambah, menambah lah orang kata. I wish, so, I wish I'm, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> so that I can get free food. Boleh, boleh. Nanti ni nak hantar dari Sabah ke Pago, insyaAllah. <laughs> boleh. So what, what your way of coping, Sister Nadia, so, when you are stressed? Personally, if me, myself, I would write. Journaling really helps me. Like seriously, journaling really helps me. And I've been keeping journals since secondary school. Mm. So, um, and at that time around, I don't know that writing is actually a stress reliever. But um, as I learned and, um, you know, being in this field, I, I realized that, oh, no wonder it gives me some um, comfort situation right mm. because sense of uh, uh, calm inside because uh, when I write down things um, I let out things that have been bugging me in my head so I would say it as a brain dump okay when writing it things you are brain dumping all of the thoughts that you have in your head on paper and then you can read it through and evaluating things and from that, you can actually putting aside or categorizing it into certain certain types of categories. So imagine, imagine uh, I I always like this um, analogy. I would say, so there are, there are a lot of files in our head mm -hmm. with a lot of things lah that we think about, kan? And then uh, when we write it down, it's actually um, organizing the files into its own category. So it be more manageable. Okay, it's like that. So Definitely. for those for those who would like to find uh, other coping mechanism, you can try writing and journaling. Your feelings first. You, you you don't have to you don't have to think so big like okay what can I do what can I say what to write what not. You can just um like, write down what do you feel today. Oh um today I feel like um I'm okay because of this because of that and try it can actually helps you oh, a good way right right yeah what interesting and also good way to cope with stress and uh things like that so um when you talk about adjustment you know at home we are someone's daughter we are someone's uh, granddaughter you know these responsibilities these adjustments and I, I I really do you know I really understand what what are the what what adjust what adjustment means here, so yes of course fulfilling each role as someone's daughter someone's granddaughter someone's sister, so yeah I think the the thing to have with lectures or with educators and students is a common ground for them to to be together and on board on this journey so okay uh a very eye-opening answer thank you for that and and then let's talk about you know during uh rtl the assignments the workloads mm -hmm. so people might say there are too many written assignments too many reports you know unclear assessment instruction so Actually, can can these problems? I mean, can these issues really lead to mental health issues? So yeah, that's the third question. That would be the third question. The questions would be the um, heavy workloads, assignments, yeah. uh, assessment, reports mm -hmm. um, can lead to mental health issues. Yeah. Um. How to say? Okay. Uh, when we talk about mental health issues, I need to I need to clarify this first. So mental health issues is not the same as um, mental health problems. Okay, men okay. So everyone um, have mental health. So mental health is um, 
is the same as physical health, but mental disorder is different thing. Okay, so when all of us have mental health, means that there are some um, trigger or a problem that can cause to affect our mental health, which is the mental issues. Okay, but mental mental health problems are more prone to um, discuss about mental disorder or mental illness. So now we're talking about mental health. Okay, I need to clarify that first. So when we talk up, when you talk about assignments, um, assessment, and whatnot, um, in a way, before RTL, it it can lead to mental health issues. It can increase your stress. It can it can cause your stress first. It can increase your stress. Um, it can uh, cause you to feel anxious and um, other mental health issues. Okay, but when um, RTL happened, perhaps it it has been a contributing factor to the problems or to the mental health issues. Because now that you are quarantined, we are all quarantined, um, some of us are stuck at certain places where they will be away from our family or some of them, like you said, um, at home. So we need to juggle things. Okay, before this, uh, we are 100% in university. So we don't really um, have the... Mm, the res not like the responsibility not to do the house chores because we're away but now that you're at home you need to do the house chores so your parents might not know that you are at in your room close the door um have class and suddenly your mother calls you oh nina tolong kat baju oh nina tolong master like suddenly in the middle of class okay so perhaps um all these things be overwhelming to you and it leads to have mental health issues okay um but again at this time around um rtl is not the root cause okay rtl is not the root cause and it does it applies to everyone it doesn't apply to everyone and what we need to do is actually identifying the root cause okay for example like let's say when, when a client comes to me and say that, oh, uh, sister, I have problems with my um, group mate, let's say. Uh, we have discussed and whatnot, but we, we, we cannot really cooperate and whatnot. So I want to um, back off from that group and change into other group mates, let's say. But then when I explore further, it's actually the communication barrier between the client and the group mates. So it's like an iceberg. So do Nina know about iceberg? Have you have you seen a picture of an iceberg? Right, okay. So the tip of an iceberg is actually the presenting problem. Yeah, the the the, uh, the tip of an iceberg under the ocean. So the tip of it is actually the presenting problems. But underlying of that ocean, the underneath of it is actually the root cause. Okay, so when we say that we are affected by RTL, it's not 100% because of this RTL. But perhaps there are underlying costs of it. For example, there are some personal issues, perhaps uh, some family problems, uh, financial issues that lead or contribute to the stress and affects the academic performance, that affects your focus, that affects your... your um, um, the committed in in attending classes, okay. So all of these are not easy to detect if we are not aware of it. So we really need to aware of this and um, be able to acknowledge the fact that we are not okay. That first, okay. And speaking about all these um, issues. Um, we need to think about in being resilient. Okay, have you have you heard about about resilient? Okay, so resilient is when um, it's actually a process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, or significant sources of stress. In other words, it's actually being able to get back up after um encounter a significant stress 
Okay, so um, when we undergo all this stress and whatnot, we need to know that uh, we need to do something about it. Okay, so there are actually two, um, there are actually many, many ways on how to develop your resilience, but I'm going to focus on only two types of um, uh, ways that you can actually practice. Okay, the first one is try to only focus on the things that you can control. Okay, again, focus on the things that you can control. Okay, we can't do anything about RTL. We can we can say that, okay, let's just um, drop this RTL. I'm, I'm going to come to university and have a physical uh, class as usual. We can't do that at this time around because of COVID. We prioritize our safety first, okay? But we can, what we can focus is actually adjusting, communicating, and try to find ways in still um, able to focus in class, attending uh, our online class and whatnot, in a better way, which re relates to the coping mechanism. So all these things would not be well uh, without us realizing the first that we are not okay. So that's the first one. Okay, focus on things that you can control. So the second one is actually seek support. I know that it seems a uh, cliche or or something that you often hear about but seeking support is very very important okay some of the students they they choose not to share their problems with people because they think that by sharing their problems it shows that they are weak when the fact that it's not it's actually when you are sharing your problems with people your trusted person uh, in other words, you are. Um, it makes you feel that you have someone to support you, some someone to rely on. Okay, and other than that, you can have um, different opinions and perspective on this matter. Because first, it's yourself, your mindset, on how you see things. Okay, like I said earlier, if you see things as a problem, then we don't want to do anything about it. It will remain as a problem. But when you talk about your problems with your friends, your trusted people, perhaps they have another ways of um, perspective. Perhaps some of them would say, uh, I understand you that you are struggling right now, but let's think about ways to deal with it instead of dwelling in the problems. If in Malay, I would like to say, uh, jangan berenang lama-lama dalam um, lautan masalah. I would like to I would, I would like to call it that way. Yeah, kita uh, kita berenang dalam masalah tu um, bukan berenang lama-lama. Okay, yes we have problems but we don't want to really spend time in that problem without really seeking solution or alternative to deal with it, to solve it. Okay, and um, these two tips I would say on how to be resilient during this time around Perhaps some of you may, may start your journey of uh, res resiliency early or um, some of you may listen to this word of resilience first time. It's okay because um, the process of being resilient is um, never ending and different people have different journey. So um, start your journey in being resilient. Okay, and take your time. Take your time. And acknowledge the effort that um, you are trying your best right now. So it's very interesting to like uh, to know about how to be resilient, you know, because all this time I, I, I kept on like listening, resilient, resilient, but today I've learned something because there are ways, you know, to increase our daya ketahanan lah, kiranya. So, um, Let's move on to our fourth question, Sis Nadia. Uh, so, to cope, when we talk about coping mechanism, there are many ways to cope. But then, um, some people still struggle, you know. Uh, they, mm -hmm. they do not know how to speak up. They do not know who to tell, who to turn to when they have these problems, you know. So, um, seeing professional help, seeking for help with the professional is of course one of the ways 
So can you elaborate more how seeking a professional help can help students can cater their needs to go through RTL? Since you yourself is a counselor, so what 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 can professional help provide to students? Okay. Um, I really like this question because um, I think I've spoken about seeking help is very important and I mentioned about seeking help from your trusted people and that also includes professional, okay? Um, in, in easier explanation to say that um, seeing help or seeking help from professional um, is very very important but not just to solve your problems okay because people some people okay some people have these misconceptions about seeing counselor so in this in this uh, context we are talking about professional as in counselor okay we're not talking about uh, psychiatrists or um psychologists okay but in, uh, in this time around we're talking about counselor okay um Wait, I'm just trying to, okay. Again, uh, seeing help from professional, okay. Misconceptions, okay. The first misconceptions that people have that hinders them to seek help is um, they think that by telling their personal problems is an aid. Okay, they, they feel like that. They feel like sharing their problems um, is something that is forbidden to share. When the fact that when you share to a counselor, they are professional. They have their own, we have our own counselor act that we follow. And from that um, act, uh, it has some, um, it has a lot of, I would say, act on protection of the client. So one of it is we can't breach any any issues that clients share with us with anyone so we can break the confidentiality unless there is some necessary and that is by the consent of the client so we can't really we can't really just um blindly share the problems to other professionals for consultation we need to ask the client first oh okay um i think that uh, uh i need some consultation from other professional may i share your personal problems with others but i don't disclose your pers uh, your details as in your name your background and whatnot just a rough idea on the part that um i want to get consulted with that's the first one. Second one is people think that um by seeing counselor um it shows that they are problematic okay when the fact that you are not problematic. It's actually a way for you um, showing yourself proactively seeking solutions to improve yourself because every day we deal with many issues, personal issues, interpersonal, intrapersonal, families, relationships, academic, um, addiction. Um, and these are just a general ideas of issues. There are a lot of mini like um specific ones like self-confidence self-assertiveness um trauma some um, emotions uh, regulations so all this comprises into different different types of issues okay so when you come to counselor a counselor is actually providing you a safe space for you to open up to be yourself to just speak your mind to just tell everything Okay, and we treat our um, client individually. We don't we don't really see like let's say I have um, two clients with same issues, but it's not the same for them. So I'm not going to use the same intervention for both clients because it has to it has I have to to see in specific clients and at at that at that round. So. Um, other than that, in this RTL, um, we can help you to discover the root cause of your problems before it leads to more serious mental health issues. 
So the words of prevention is better than cure is applying here. Okay, so we help you to identify. So we explore your problems, um, asking you um, what is actually your your problems in in depth. Okay, that's why we have um, we not just have like one or two sessions. Okay, um, perhaps like um, more more than more than five. Okay, it depends on the clients. Okay, that's that's briefly on it. And then uh, we also help students or my clients to identify their potential. Okay, because some of some of us may not realize that we have the potentials in us or the abilities or the strength that we have that we can use okay, to utilizing it. So we help students to identify this and to help them um, to encourage them that they can fully utilize their potential, their abilities in contributing to the society and be a beneficial person. Okay, so it's very, very important for you to reach out Okay, whatever misconceptions that you have, um, perhaps it's your personal experience. I don't doubt that some of these students are afraid to reach out to the counselors because of their past experience. Okay, uh, but you have to know that different counselors have different approach. And now that you know we have a counselor act, you can actually make a complaint if a counselor that you're seeing if you know that the counsel you're seeing is breaching the confidentiality, okay? Um, so we really care about our clients' welfare. So if any one of you are seeing me, um, you can ask me to have the consent, informed consent that we, have, we explain on this, um, I would say the, the regulations of attending counseling session. Okay, so um, it's very, very important for you to seek help and allow us to help you and assist you in dealing with this um, RTL issues or other than other than these RTL issues, you can just come to your to your counselor and um, get opinions from them, get help. So reaching out, right? That's the utmost thing that we have to do when we have problems reaching out. And I think the problem here is the stigma that people mm. hold on to. Like, if you go see a counselor, you're problematic. And if you go see a counselor, they're going to, like, tell your secrets and stuff. So these are the stigma that we have to, like, get rid of. And if we have a problem, we have to admit and acknowledge it. And then seek help. Reach out so that we can, um, you know, solve it together. And uh, it's very interesting where different people have different approach because when it comes to mental health, mental health issues, mental health disorder, it is not a one-size-fits-all situation. Like, different people, we have different approach. So, um, I think we are going to go to our last question for tonight. And uh, I, I think this question is quite um, interesting. So, when we talk about mental health issues, when we talk about mental health disorder, especially, People often say that if you have problem, you have to seek. Um, to, we have you have to seek a God. You know, you associate God with uh, you associate the religion with mental health. So, um, from your point of view, how can we cope spiritually? How can we use a religion, or how can we utilize our religion to cope with stress with um, mental health issues and stuff like that. Okay. Um, how do we cope um, with daily issues, I would say, um, spiritually? So, um, of course, like you said, there is some stigma. Like people say that, oh, um, especially regarding with mental disorder and whatnot. I'm, I'm not going to go further on that. Um, but how can we cope spiritually? So, um, yes, um, like I said earlier, um, what can we do at this time around is focus on what we can control. Okay. However, um, not everything are under our power. Okay. So, um, 
to be able to cope spiritually is um in other words i would say to gain kekuatan jiwa it's 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 an internal strength okay and for us to gain this internal strength is by asking from the owner of it which is allah subhanahu taala okay so um there's an ayah in al-quran that can actually help us okay in understanding on this um problems or difficulties that we're going through so it is from surah al-baqarah ayah number 155 it says that and certainly we shall test you with something of fear hunger loss of wealth lives and fruits but give glad tidings to asobiru which is the patient so it is stated in the quran that we are all going to be tested with all with all kinds of um problems or difficulties but if you are patient the grand like a prizes for you and then the ayah after that says that who when afflicted with calamity say truly to Allah we belong and truly to him we shall return which, which is the ayah goes inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun okay some some of us um are familiar with that ayah that we often use it when someone passed away but in the quran it says that when you are tested with something say inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun first the first response you would say is this ayah so that we know all these are being tested from him okay not from people not from not from human but it's from him himself so um when we acknowledge that all of this test is from him uh we are not saying that okay let's just ignore the fact that we are we are struggling no we acknowledge that and we make effort to deal with this so it gives us a piece of um calmness internally that okay all of these are from Allah so what can I do to deal with this what can I do by being tested with this then only comes your effort okay so you're not just like blindly ignoring it and okay lah um I mean tested what that would it's not like that okay so first uh you need to accept that it's from Allah SWT and then um then only you strategize and um find ways to cope seek help okay and know that Allah will not test us within our ability and i always say that um ujian hebat untuk orang hebat meaning that all of our tests are hebat and we cannot compare our tests with our friends our families or other people's tests because um, we are being tested differently and perhaps if we are being tested as how our friends being tested we may not be able to cope with it and deal with it or carry it okay so Allah give um our test us within our capacity and he give us the solution and what we need to do is putting the effort to deal with it without invalidating or ignoring the fact that we are struggling so in other words um, we can just say that, okay, I'm not okay. I'm struggling right now. I'm so sad. Can I cry? Yes, you can. You can just state that I'm not okay today. Can I, can I, um, can I stop for a while from doing my, my assignment? Yes, you can. Take a break. Okay. But then after you have taken um, some time to, to chill, to relax, go back to your work. But if that doesn't work for you, then seek help for you to find other ways to deal with it. Okay, so um, simply say that um, that's how um, uh, we're going to have the spiritual strength inside. Okay, and other than that is by being um, mindful in solat. Okay, um, because we know that uh, one way for us to connect with Allah SWT is through prayers by means performing your prayers so um, try to be mindful on reciting the ayah try to understand the ayah of course it's not easy and it's not um, it's not easy for, 
for someone that 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 don't know Arab, but you can learn. Okay, and it is an effort, so you need to acknowledge the effort. Okay, so um, yeah, that would be my my answer on that uh, question. So yeah, the the moment when uh, Sister Nadia said Allah never burdens a soul with a, uh, beyond its uh, capacity. It reminded me of one surah in the Quran, which is um, So with every hardship comes um, ease. Yeah, comes ease. Yeah. So of course, um, we turn to the one when we have problem. And that's actually a great, great way of uh, coping mechanism. And I think, yeah, the, the the balance between spiritual and also um, you know uh, dunia dan akhirat balance lah, right? We have to focus on our classes. We have to focus on um, being the best in the dunya, and also we have to focus uh, uh, in being the best for akhirah. So I think uh, we have come to the end of uh, all of the questions five questions were asked and all of the answers are insightful and i think our audiences have gained a lot of knowledge today and of course i myself i've learned a lot especially yeah i am very i really like the the resilient part so thank you for the knowledge and of course um to all the audiences uh if you have problems or if you have, um, if you need help, then seek help, reach out because we are humans and, you know, earthlings, what we call. Uh, we are not perfect and we have to acknowledge that. Can Sister Nadia? And yes. I think it's, 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 this session is an eye opening session and I hope everyone benefits from it. So, um, do you think we have a time for a question or two or? Yeah, we are, well, we can. We can if we have questions. I think one question should do. Me, okay, sure. If we have questions. Uh, are there any questions? And the floor? Me, I think I, I, I read some comments saying that Okay, there's the one question, I think. Okay, we have, yeah, I think we have one question from Nur Amalia, is it? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, all right. So, for those who are staying in Upago, how do you recommend the students to take care of their well-being mentally while at Mahala? Because it can be very exhausting if you're alone plus introvert, okay. Um, okay, when you mention specifically introvert, okay, um, so, introverts. Mm, being alone plus introvert um find support system i would say okay uh, i'm sure that you are not 100 percently alone there as in there are other students okay there are other students there so if the other students are not from your circle of friends try to make friends okay try to make friends and don't total up your feelings to yourself but of course yeah um starting a new friendship might take a while for you to be really open up okay to your friends to your new friends especially but by just sitting alone um i'm not saying that it's 100 percently unhealthy but it's not really recommended to be 100 percently alone because um i heard this this uh event a program saying that if you have if we spend more time alone perhaps the, the tendency for us to think a lot of things and that thoughts that we have might lead to a negative thoughts if we are not aware of it okay so by 
um, wider your connections at Mahala. Okay, perhaps this is one of the hikmah of you staying in Mahala to gain new circle of friends because each one of us have different needs and that needs that you have that you need to fulfill it doesn't really comes from your own circle of friends okay perhaps by creating new friendship with new friends around you right now may helps you and give you a different experience of friendship okay you 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 may gain different perspective from them okay so i would say that uh we the first one and then second one is um try to um do some activities okay um like let's say you can i i think you 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 can walk around mahala not like during quarantine of course not during quarantine okay but um don't don't really just stay in your room okay have some fresh air outside look at the sky you know that we have we have a very beautiful sky in pago especially during sunset i need to say this okay so have some fresh air um go out okay go out so these are some of the ways for you to take care of your uh, mental health okay i hope that answer you sister uh, amalia Yeah, I think that's a very uh, comprehensive and holistic um, question, uh, answer, sorry. Uh, I think if they have, like the audiences, if they have any inquiries or they have any problems, they can like reach out to you, right, Sister Nadia? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I, I need to say this too. Uh, there are ways for to reach out to me. You can just, um, for UI, UI students, uh, we have a system uh, that we call as Ocrest. You can book us from through your iMatloom actually through your iMatloom. So you can um, book an appointment with me through that um, through your iMatloom, and we have an online session. Okay, so you can choose whether you want to um, have a virtual by written session or by video calling. Okay, or you can just email me at nadiamizat at iaum.edu.my or, um, you know, just book an appointment or email me if you have any inquiries or, you know, just to have um, some chit-chat session, perhaps. Okay, that would, be, that would be how to reach out to me. So, at least we know that uh, if they... You know we have someone to turn to so i think uh we are at the end it's 9 30 already and um any last words from sister nadia any last okay. remarks my last yeah. remark would be coming back to our um title of the program which is acknowledging the effort i would say that um be proud of where you are right now okay um, be proud that you have go through um, a lot. Okay, wherever you are, whether you are at university or whether you are at home, um, after all that you have gone through, be proud of it. Acknowledge the effort that you have gone through all this, and please um, take care of yourself, take care of your mental well-being, um, and don't hesitate to share your problems with people especially uh, with professional because i think i see some um, comments saying that uh, students are afraid to open up because some of them are uh, unable or having some problem to express feelings but it's okay you can just um, reach out to me and have time you don't have to to force yourself to 100 percent be open during that first session it might take a while for you to be comfortable with me first uh, in order for you to really share your problem so take your time but do reach out when you have some issues or if uh, you need some uh, consultation you can just reach out to me but do not ignore um, the changes that you experience okay so um I, that will be my remarks on these programs so back at you 
Nina? Thank you so much, Sister Nadia. And also, I would like to thank the offices for giving me this opportunity to be the moderator and to have uh, Sister Aina Nadia as the speaker. And uh, before we end the session, I would like to apologize if there are any uh, mistakes and wrongdoings. Thank you so much for those who stayed until the end. And um, I think we should close our session with Tasbih Kifaran Surah Wal As. Surah Al As. It's been a pleasure being with all of you today. Thank you and good night, everyone.